Penn State Center for Green Roof Research, we've been investigating the benefits of green roofs for about the last five years, and it's starting to pay off for us here on our campus. Last fall, we installed two large-scale green roofs, one on top of the new forestry building and the other here on the vegetable cellar out behind the Tyson building. Both of those roofs are being planted this spring, and we're starting to plant the vegetable cellar roof today. So let's go up on top of the roof and see what's going on. The vegetable cellar behind Tyson was built in the 1920s and the roof needed to be replaced. So we thought it would be an excellent venue for installing a new green roof here on campus. In order to prepare this roof for planting today, we started by installing a new waterproofing material over the top of the roof. Then over the top of that, we install a drainage board. Now the drainage board is made up of a felt and a plastic material which allows excess water to drain through the roof and out off the roof so that we don't have ponding water up on top of the roof. That layer is followed by a plastic layer which is a root barrier which helps to prevent roots from going into the waterproofing material and a felt layer to help distribute excess water. Over the top of all of this we install a green roof media. Now, this particular green roof media is made up of gravel and local compost that we manufacture here on campus from post-consumer food waste. And it's different than a normal soil in that it is relatively lightweight and drains extremely well. Plant selection is determined by the depth of the media on the green roof. In shallow roofs, like this section, which is four inches deep, we'll use a lot of drought-tolerant species like sedums and sempervivums and delispermas. This sedum is sedum album, which is selected on many green roofs because it is extremely drought-tolerant and very hardy on the harsh conditions of the rooftop. We can mix that with other sedums, like this Hispanicum, which has a nice color in the winter and retains its foliage to give you some visual interest across the winter. We can include things like this sedum linari, which is a creeping sedum which will grow over the edge of the rooftop and has sort of a white line around the outside edge of the leaf to give you some extra visual interest. And things like Delisperma, which has a large showy flower in the summer. Where the media is deeper, say six inches or more, we have a lot more choices in terms of plant material. We can use plants like this herbaceous artemisia, which provides textural interest with the leaves and flowers during the summer. We can use plants like potentilla, this thing that looks similar to a strawberry, has nice flowers on it, is relatively drought tolerant, and will exist very nicely on a deeper roof. We can use lots of little bulbs, like things like alliums and maybe some of the smaller tulips. Or we can use a lot of different grasses, particularly the shorter growing drought tolerant species like fescues. The vegetable cellar roof is being planted by Penn State students as part of a class project. Each group of students designed a section of the roof. Each section of the roof is different. Some are very formal with geometric patterns in the planting. Others are very informal with broad sweeping drifts of plants that should end up looking very similar to a natural meadow. Here's an example of a green roof that's been planted for a couple of years out at our research farm. You can see how the plants have grown, filled in the rooftop. Each one is finding its own niche on the roof. We have a lovely rooftop garden and we're getting environmental benefits like reducing stormwater runoff, improving the quality of the stormwater that runs off, reducing the air conditioning demand on this building. So the next time you're on Penn State's campus, come look at our two new green roofs. A copy of the program you've just seen can be purchased through Penn State Media Sales at mediasales.psu.edu or by calling 800-770-2111.